Hi everybody, this is Cindy McVeigh from Crazy for Crafting and I'm back today with a new tutorial for you about using Photoshop Elements. I'm using Photoshop Elements 8 but um, even though on the face a lot of the other versions look differently most of them will have the same and I think all of them back to at least three will have the same tools that I'm using today. They may look a little different be in a little different place but they're usually called the same thing and if you do a little hunting you can probably find them and use all of these techniques. So the technique I'm using today is um, I call it color pop. I don't know if there's a I'm sure there's a, an official term for it I don't know what that is so I just named it myself and I'm calling it color pop and you'll see the reason that I call, uh, call it that. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to take this beautiful photograph um, that a friend of mine took of this cardinal happens to be my state bird here in the state of Virginia and um, let's say for some reason I wanted to really focus on that cardinal and take all that green as beautiful it is, as it is the greens kinda overpowering and I might want to take it out so we can easily do that in Photoshop Elements and we can take that picture from that to this in just about five minutes and I'm gonna show you how to do exactly that today here's another example um, and let's say just for fun I wanted to highlight those three tulips only you can see what a neat effect that is wouldn't that make a great background um, for a scrapbook page or it would make even a beautiful note card I think here's another one of my daughter and her husband they just got married in November and one of the techniques you're gonna see frequently in wedding albums these days is this color pop technique and in this case I took this photograph and just popped his boutonniere and her bouquet so that I had that black and white with the pop of red and this is a beautiful effect to use on a, a wedding album page say with this as the main image and then a couple of smaller ones in full color around it. It makes a really um, really striking page. So let me show you how to do that today. Like I said it's super easy. You can do it in five minutes um, and I think you're gonna find yourself looking at pictures in a whole different way and finding pictures that you can do this technique with. Um, I sometimes will just sit at night and play with it because it's so much fun. It's almost like having a coloring book and crayons when you were a kid. Um, but before we do that, I want to show you a couple of little um, one stroke or a little keystroke shortcuts that are going to make it much, much easier to do this. Um, <clears throat> pardon me. We're going to be using the brush to paint on our photographs a lot today. And we're going to be having to make them different sizes. So an easy way to do that is with your bracket keys. Um, as you'll see here, one, the left one makes it smaller and the right one makes it larger. To find those, look on your keyboard right next to the letter P. And you'll see two keys with brackets on the bottom, parentheses on the top. We're using the brackets, so there's no need for the shift key. It makes it a super easy shortcut. So you might want to jot that down, keep it in mind, we're going to be using that later. Then the other one that I wanted to point out was the control plus and the control minus. As you can see, control plus zooms in, control minus zooms out. Now these are keyboard ways to do this. I'm going to show you a much easier way um, to zoom in. In fact, I rarely use control plus to zoom in. Um, I sometimes do use the control minus to zoom out. But if you have a roller on your mouse, you can also do that. As you can see, I'm rolling in and rolling out with my mouse. So another easy way to do that, to zoom in, is to click on your magnifying glass over here. And then let's say you want to zoom in on a particular part. Let's say I want to zoom in on the word in. I can just draw a marquee around that, and when I let it go, it zooms in. If I want to zoom in a little more, it can do it again. So those are some easy shortcuts. Let's zoom back out with my mouse and we're going to be doing a lot of zooming in and out and changing the size of our brush so those are two shortcuts I wanted to show you let's go ahead and get rid of that now we don't need it anymore so let's say besides just for artistic effect let's say we have a photograph like this and this is a photograph that I took of a couple of my cards I'm a Stampin' Up! demonstrator and I will f used to frequently post over on Split Coast Stampers and sometimes you get questions about particular cards and we'd make little tutorials over there too. Um, let's say I wanted to use this photograph. Somebody asked me a question about this card and I wanted to make a tutorial of it and post a picture and there was really no way to crop at that picture out without getting part of this purple one in there. 
So instead I decided I would just, you know, what the heck, post the whole picture and maybe it would generate some interest in that purple card as well. But I really want to focus on this one. So I decided to use the color pop technique for this. And here's how you do that. You can see over in your layers palette when you open up a photograph it puts it in the layers and it's just called it background. That's fine. We don't need to name it. If you do not have this layers palette, go to your window drop down and you're going to see I have selected adjustments, effects, and layers. So those are the three things that show up over here um, on my sidebar. Now I'm going to need the layers and the adjustment. I won't need the effects for this but I tend to always leave that open because I use it so often. So now that I have my image open I need to create a duplicate of that. And this is a good point for me to remind you never never bring your original photograph into Photoshop and, and do anything to it. Before you ever bring it into your photo editor always make a backup copy of it. Make a folder specifically um, for your originals somewhere on your desktop. Call it backup photos, whatever you want to name it. But never, never do anything, even cropping or resizing with your originals because you never know when you might need that original and if you've resized it um, or even just cropped it, you might be sorry later. So always make a duplicate of that in your backups and then work with your copy. And that's what I have here. Um, and I've named it Cards 01. So now that I've got my copy open in my Photoshop, I want to actually make a duplicate of that in my layers. And to do that, I'm going to take this thumbnail here and I'm going to drag it down to this little icon which looks sort of like a post-it note with its corner flipped up. And you can see if I hover over it, it says create a new layer. So I hold down my mouse, drag this, and drop it onto that icon and you see it's made background copy and that's exactly what I need. So now I have the original and a copy of the original. And for this technique that's what you need. So now that I have my my background copy which is the one on top and that's fine it doesn't really matter which one's on top or bottom but we're going to work with the one that's on top. With that highlighted we're going to click on adjustments. And you can and that's the little icon that looks like um, a ball that's half white and half black. When we get the drop down menu we want hue saturation so we click on that and look what it's done it's created another layer that's called hue saturation. So look what it has right here it has a copy that's the size of our photograph but it's pure white. That's because essentially what it's done is it's taken out all the it's going to take out all the color. Whatever we do to this it's going to show up we're, we're going to do down here. So if you look at the adjustments now that it's created, we're going to take this saturation and we're going to dial that all the way down to negative 100. Default is zero right in the middle. And you can play with that and see what it does. If you look, if you dial it all the way up, it makes it really look crazy. Um, but dial it all the way down and it takes out all the color. So now we have a black and white image of that. And that's what this hue saturation um, adjustment layer has done. And because this is white, we now need to put color back in. We need to do just the opposite. We need the black. So we're going to go over here to our color picker, make sure that our black and white is selected. If it's not, click on this tiny little one for the default background and foreground. The double arrow here toggles back and forth. You can also hit the X on your keyboard to toggle back and forth, but make sure that your black is on top. 